Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's word today. Now we're in a new week. The month of November is going on already. And God has said we should in this month release the Hushites and the Esthers for our nation. And we've been having this prayer meeting every night at 12 midnight via Zoom. And I want to thank those of you that have been joining us for this prayer meeting. We've been having an amazing time, making so much power available. I want to invite you, if you've not been joining us, if you, if you want the link, you can send us a message and then we'll send you the link so you can join us even tonight. Praise God. So I've been talking about, we, we, last week we spent more time talking about Hushite. Who's Hushite? And, and how to identify um, a Hushite or if you are a Hushite. And then on, on Friday, I began to talk about Esther. Now, we're going to continue today to talk about, look at Esther. And, and we, we saw how she became queen last week. And I told you how, that her first assignment when she became queen was to save the life of the king. Now, that was the first thing that happened when she became queen. Praise God. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for a day like this. The revelation of your truth is being made known in our hearts. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is bringing to light every hidden thing inside of us. That the light of God will shine on us and that we will prosper in his light. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So Esther saved the king. And how did she save the king? Mother Kaya got an information. I said a lot of things last week Friday. If you didn't listen to last week Friday's message, go 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 on our YouTube channel and, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. And, but if you have, then go on our YouTube channel, look for the message of Friday last week and listen to it. It's, it's, it'll be a blessing to you. Praise God. So let's go. Let's look at Esther chapter 3 from verse 1. Now she, she had become queen and she had saved the life of the king. And you know, like the Bible says, it was written. What Mordecai did to save the king was written. In, in, the, in the chronicles of the king, but nothing was done to Mordecai. No reward was given to Mordecai at that time. Now, you want to imagine sometimes how God works out things. We are looking at all these stories to pull out every juice that we can pull out of it. Praise God. So, so we see verse 1, chapter 3. It says, after these things, Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagites, and advanced him and set his seat. See, that means Haman had a seat already. Advanced him and set his seat above all the princes who were with him. And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to him. And for so the king had commanded consigning him. Did you see that now? I want you to follow something carefully. Because sometimes when trouble starts, uh, many people don't try to find out the root of the trouble. You just get into the muddled waters and... Start looking for how to come out of it. But I want us to get to the root of this thing. Esther is now queen. Mordecai is standing at the king's gate. And then suddenly, the king decided to promote someone whose name was Haman. And the Bible said he made him above every other prince, prince in the land. And then the king gave a commandment that all the people within the king's gate must bow and pay homage to Haman when they see him. All right. So, now we see something here in verse 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. In verse 2, And all the king's servants who were within the king's gate bowed and paid homage to Haman, for so the king had commanded concerning him. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. Did you see that now? Mordecai would not bow. Follow this. Then the king's servants who were within the gate said to Mordecai, Why do you transgress the king's command? Okay. Now it happened when they spoke to him daily and he would not listen to them, that they told it to Haman to see whether Mordecai's words will stand. For Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. <laughs> now... This is the story. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everyone was expected to bow to him. But Mordecai said, no, I, I can't bow to a man. Why? Why can't you bow to a man? He said, because I'm a Jew. So what do you mean you're a Jew? Yeah, we, we don't bow. The only person we bow to is God. Now, that, that is how they were raised. They were raised to only reverence God. They don't reverence any man. Now, but you see, the king had given this command that everybody should pay homage to Haman. But Mordecai would not. And then, not that it went unnoticed, the servants around, they say, hey, Mordecai, you're looking for trouble. You're not doing what the king said. The king gave this command. And Mordecai said, no, 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 I'm a Jew. We don't do such things. And then the people were like, for real? And then they say, you know what, let's talk to Haman and let's see what he's going to do about it. Whether this thing that Mordecai is saying will stand. What did Mordecai say? Jews don't bow down. They don't pay such homage to people. They only bow down to God. Now, let's continue in verse 5. When Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage, Haman was filled with wrath. But he disdained to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had told him of the people of Mordecai. Instead, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, the people of Mordecai. So he saw it, and he, he first thought, okay, you know what, let me deal with this guy. But he said, no, it's not a, it's not a personal thing. It's a, it's a traditional thing. So if I want to deal with this man, the best thing I should do, I should deal with everybody. That this was when trouble started. Now, who fermented this trouble, you want to think? You want to ask, who fermented this trouble? Was it Haman? Was, was, was Mordecai right not to obey what the command, uh, not to obey the command the king had given? You know, we, we are going to say today that we should, the, the Bible says we're subject to all Authority for every authority that is ordained by God. Now, a story like this, you want to look at it and you want to see where it ended. See, that's why I said something that the Bible, and that's why we're studying studying the Bible now. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received God's word, what they did with it, and how they ended with it. So this is a complete story now. So we find this man, Mordecai, who was uh, not, not obeying the king's command in respect to paying homage. Now, not because he was defy, defying the king, but for this particular command, he said, no, we, the Jews, can't keep it. Now, Haman, having determined to destroy the Jews, decided to go to the king. And he told the king, see, he painted a picture before the king. Let me read what he said to the king. Then Haman, verse 8, Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in all the province of your kingdom. Their laws are different from all other people, and they do not keep the king's laws. He generalized it. Now, this is one way the devil gets in. See, the Bible says we're not ignorant of the, the devil, right? Now, this is one way the devil gets in. You see, I'm, now the Jews keep every other command. But this particular one about paying homage to a man, they say, no, we can't do that. Now, Mordecai, uh, um, Haman reporting to the king, say, look, there is a people who don't obey any of your command. They generalized it now. 
Praise God. And still verse 8 now. Therefore, if it, it, therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let this remain. If it please the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver into the hands of those who do the work to bring it into the king's treasury. He showed the king the economic side of it. It's not going to cost you or the kingdom anything. I'll foot the bill. But you see these people who don't obey your laws, the best thing we can do for them or to them is completely destroy them. Praise God. So, now, funny enough, the king gave him order that he should carry it out and do it. The king actually told him that you can go ahead. And the king gave him his signet ring. Now, that's, that's the stamp of approval from the king. Now, Mordecai got to hear of this, what Haman had done. And you know the story. And then Mordecai called Esther. Now let's read from verse chapter 4. When Mordecai learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gates clothed in sackcloth see and in every province where the king's command and decree arrived there was great mourning amongst the among the jews with fasting weeping wailing and many laid in sackcloth and ashes so esther's maid and you know came and told her and the queen was deeply distressed then she sent garments to clothe mordecai and take off take his sackcloth away from him, but he will not accept them. Then Esther called Hattaj, one of the kings, Enoch, you know, whom he had appointed to attend to her. And she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. Praise God. Now, he went and he asked Mordecai, what's going on? Esther wants to know. Now, it's, is it not funny that when this decree came, Mordecai didn't rush to tell Esther, look at what is going on and you are in government, you know, like we do today. You are in government and this kind of a thing is going on. Hey, you know, you, we, we, just, we just think, yes, God has placed certain people there and we're going to see the role that they play. Praise God. So he went and then got the copy of the king's decree. Hatha went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in the front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasury to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction, which was given as Shushan, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go into the king to make supplication for them and plead before him for her people. Now, I want us to end here and listen. In this case, the king had made a decree. He had made a law that was going to affect the Jews. The law has already been made. Now, it was a law made out of error like I said earlier, Haman gave the king a general picture. He didn't give him a specific um, picture of what really happened. So the king gave that decree. The decree has already been passed. So when Mordecai was sending the message to Esther, she, he said, look, you've got to go and make supplication with the king that this thing is wrong. It has to be changed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen. There are certain laws in our nation like that that have been made because of a lie. We well, see that's why we are praying. Praise God. I want to stop here today because of time. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. I pray for you today that the entrance of God's word will bring light and understanding to your hearts. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.